So you've recently taken an intro electromagnetism or analog circuitry course, and you've become familiar with circuits that look like this, with some voltage source and some resistor. You recognize Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's current law, which states that the current going into a node is equal to the current going out of a node, and Kirchhoff's voltage law, which says that the sum of the voltages in any loop is zero. And now you're thinking, great, this is useless, and how do you possibly go from calculating resistance to something like a computer? Let's motivate this with an example. What if we wanted to calculate 2 plus 3? It'll be easier for us later if we instead use binary numbers. Binary is just a way of representing any decimal number using only ones and zeros. You may have seen circuit components such as resistors, capacitors, diodes, or inductors, but the key to digital logic is a new circuit component called a transistor. It has all sorts of fun properties, but the only thing that is important to us right now is that it can work like a digital switch. A typical switch works like this. If the switch is open, the current does not have a path to travel along, and in this case, the light bulb doesn't light up. When you close the switch, the current has a path and the light bulb lights up. With a transistor, instead of closing the switch with your finger, you open and close the switch with a signal voltage. If the signal wire has no voltage, the switch is open. If the signal wire has a voltage, say 5 volts, the switch is closed. Since it doesn't matter that the voltage is specifically 5 volts, we can just refer to no voltage as 0, and the presence of voltage as 1. Similarly, we can say if the light bulb is off, this is a 0, and if it is on, this is a 1. The way a transistor is typically drawn is like this, and you can remember which wire is the signal wire because it's not actually connected to the circuit. We can summarize the effect that the signal wire has on the light bulb in this table. If the input is 0, the output is 0. Similarly, if the input is 1, the output is 1. This isn't a very exciting result, but what if we wire the circuit differently, like this? Now if the transistor switch is open, the current only has one path to travel, and that's across the light bulb. If the switch is closed, then the current takes the path of no resistance, and the light bulb stays off. Now the output is the opposite of whatever the input is. This circuit is the first of four tools that we will need to build our calculator. It is called a NOT gate, and we'll use this symbol to represent it. They may feel like cheating to just replace the whole circuit with a random symbol, but it's no different than taking all the complex chemistry that goes into making a battery and replacing it with a rectangle. The next tool we'll need is called an AND gate. This has two inputs. It can be summarized with this table. The output is always zero, that is to say the light bulb is always off, unless both input 1 and input 2 are 1. So how might such a circuit look? Maybe something like this. If both transistor switches are open, or either one of them is open, the current has no path to travel. It's only when both of them are open that the current has a path to the light bulb. The third tool is the OR gate. In this case, the output is 1 if either the first input or the second input or both are 1. If you're feeling clever, you can pause the video here and try to guess what the circuit might look like. The circuit might look something like this. If both switches are open, the current has no path to the light bulb. But if either one or both are open, then the current can reach a light bulb. We now have three of the four tools. To build the last one, we'll actually just combine three we've used so far, like this. Let's look at what the various outputs are. If both inputs are zero, then neither the AND gate nor the OR gate will output one. The NOT gate will return the zero into a one, and the final AND gate will return a zero since the inputs are not both one. If we do the same process for inputs of one zero and zero one, we find that the output is one. So, so far this circuit just looks like an OR gate. The difference is if both of the inputs are set to one, then the output is zero. This is called an exclusive OR gate, since it outputs one exclusively if one input or the other is set to one, but not both. So now we can revisit our original problem, 2 plus 3. We will arrange our four digital logic gates like this to create a 2-bit adder circuit. There are ways of solving exactly what components need to be arranged and how to arrange them to perform different tasks. And if you're interested, look into Carnot mapping. But back to our adder. Let's enter our inputs 1, 0 to represent 2 and 1, 1 to represent 3. The top exclusive OR gate yields a 1 since the inputs are 0 and 1 but the AND gate yields a 0. The lower exclusive OR gate yields a 0 since inputs are both 0, whereas the AND gate yields a 1 since both inputs are 1. 
In the next layer, both the exclusive OR and the AND gate yield zeros, since the inputs are all zeros. And the final OR gate yields a 1, since at least one input is 1. And if we look at the result, we get 101, which is 5 in binary. And we've successfully constructed a circuit that can do 2-bit addition.